In this video, we're going to discuss the legalities of remote consultations. Firstly, a caveat. I am a physiotherapist, so this is not legal advice. I'm unaware which professional body you are registered with or which country you're operating in. You should check your covered for your online consultations now, but you should also watch out for policy changes which may affect your remote working. So what are we gonna talk about here? Well, the unique nature of online consulting can throw up some legal issues that are not always initially apparent. For example, in America, professional licensing is usually done within the state and some online consultants have found themselves breaking the law by practicing in another state online. Here in the UK and as a non-medical prescriber, this is unlikely to be a problem. But what about remote consultations to other countries where you're not professionally registered? One popular insurer in the UK, for example, states that their therapist insurance covers remote consultations, but not business activities in America and Canada. Overall, it does seem a bit of a gray area. If you wish to make it a less gray area for you and your patient, I would advise that you ask your insurer directly, not your organization, your actual insurer, as their reply would be legally binding, unless the small print states otherwise. For foreign consultations, I would also advise you inform the patient that you are not registered in their country. And as you're not coming from their country, they'll probably perfectly understand that. Remote working is often sold as a lifestyle of open blue skies and cafes. Unfortunately, this is not gonna work for your online business. Legally, you need a secure connection, a virtual private network, VPN, and not public Wi-Fi. You also need a secure and private space, not the garden and not the kitchen with the children playing in the background. Ideally, a secure and lockable office or just a secure and private room. This is to maintain the patient confidentiality. It is advisable that the patient is also in a private space. Although this is less under your control, I would rearrange or delay a call that was attempted in a busy location like a bus or family dinner table. That's not really fair on you as a professional. Send this information to the patient in advance and ask them to prepare for the call and then avoid any misunderstandings. So the patient has given consent to a remote consultation by accepting your call or by actively connecting to it via the link. But additional consent is needed for screenshots and video recording. You should ask before you do it and say why you wish to do it what you will do with the data, and then follow your GDPR or your country's data guidelines. Online consultations can sometimes present as inadequate for the detail of assessment that you would like to provide. This should be explained to the patient and documented in your notes. With a remote assessment, you still have the same duty of care and professional standards to maintain with regards to assessment and keeping adequate notes. So again, to be clear, you still need to keep normal clinical notes, even for a short phone call. This is a more quasi-legal point, but be aware that certain aspects of communication, such as non-verbal cues, will be lost, which could lead to misunderstandings by the patient or the healthcare professional. So verbal clarity will reduce the likelihood of complaints. Ensure there are appropriate security arrangements in place when personal information is stored, sent or received electronically. The difference between desk-based computers and mobile devices is ill-defined, but there is a clear difference between personal devices and work devices. Using a mobile device has many advantages, but it should not also be your personal phone or media device. The separate device, your work device, should be stored securely when not in use and have secure passwords in place. Okay, I hope this helps. Check your insurance covers you and use the guidelines outlined in this video. Sending some preparatory information to patients in advance can then avoid some misunderstandings and awkward starts. Let me know if you've ever dialed in a patient only to be met by an unexpected image. I'll see you in the next lecture.